I hardly ever heard my parents ever say they love me. I don't think I've ever heard my dad say he's proud of me. And so that, that kind of really affects you as a child growing up and, and thinking about your worth. And I really was sort of shaped my identity and my value around trying to earn grace and earn love and trying to accomplish more so that, you know, maybe one day my dad and my mom will notice me for, for what I've accomplished. Guys, it's uh, just really good talking with you all. Um, it just gets better and better every lesson that we go through. Um, you know, I, I want to bring this up in, in traveling, and I know you can say this too, Lisa. Um, the greatest, most deepest wounds, and I don't mean greatest but as in good, I mean the deepest wounds that I see are father wounds, mm -hmm. without a doubt. And, you know, I mean, even God speaks about it. He says, you know, I'm going to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, lest I come, and the hearts of the children back to the fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So I, I'm so glad we can just really dedicate this time and have a discussion about this. Uh, Rose, I know you've got a phenomenal story of, of, of you and your dad. Would you share it with us? Absolutely. Yeah, this is a huge part of my life, is my relationship with my father. Um, Growing up, he was very uninvolved, distant, angry, um, just not really present in life, or in my life at least. Were your parents living together? Um, they were at the time. That's a little bit complicated. <laughs> but um, yeah, later on, I was 16, and it was just my dad and I at home at that point. And um, it was a really unhealthy relationship, so I had an opportunity to move out and live with a family for my church. So I thought that was God just sending me a, another option of a healthy living environment. And so... I remember going to my dad and I told him, well, uh, I'm moving out. Um, I'm going to live somewhere else. And he didn't even look up from his computer. He didn't ask any questions. Where was I going? Um, he didn't fight for me. And that's what parents are supposed to do for their children. Um, so that was a very deep wound um, that definitely left an impact on my life. And um, through the next couple years, I just, I had to wrestle through forgiveness. And I had very wise counsel in my life. Just tell me, you know, if you want to be free, if you want to be healed, if you want to be living in the abundance that God has for you, you have to forgive your dad. <laughs> and I was so resistant. I fought that. I didn't want to. He didn't deserve it. I had every excuse that I needed to not. Um, but I knew what was right, and I knew what I needed to do in order to live in that abundance um, that God had promised for me. So, yeah, I wrestled through forgiveness. I prayed a lot. <laughs> I worshiped a lot. Um, I, I just did everything I could to, you know, fake it till you make it almost. It was just repeating, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you, until it was real. Mm. Um, so then um, I had gotten to this place where I'd kind of released that relationship. And then when I was 18, so two years later, my dad um, was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer which came out of nowhere, and um, I was the only family around. And so I had to jump into this role at 18 of um, cancer, chemotherapy, surgeries, um, power of attorney, all these things that no teenager should have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, but quickly, through um, interacting with my dad on that level of taking care of him, God just started doing something <laughs> in my heart, in my dad's heart. It was truly nothing short of a miracle. Um, my dad started reading his Bible, which I have here today. And every morning, just pouring over scripture, just um, delighted to spend time with God. And I just, who is this man? Like, I was so confused. Um, wow. But God was just doing something miraculous inside of him. And he was never the same. He was just an extraordinary father after that time. And... Um, so he was given a year to live um, with his diagnosis, very aggressive cancer. And he actually lived three and a half, which again, nothing wow. short of a miracle. Three and a half years that we got to just rebuild our relationship, recreate memories, um, have good time together. And it was just a time of restoration, honestly. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. And um, he passed away a year and a half ago now. And I remember being in the car <laughs> two weeks after he died and... God somehow gives me revelations in the car. Typically, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But um, I was just thinking about that moment when I was 16 where that was reconciled, of course, with my dad, but it did leave a scar. Um, it was a deep wound and it was a painful memory. And um, then I was thinking about how long he lived. That three and a half years was just remarkable. And then I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me, he was fighting for you. 
During that three and a half years, he wasn't fighting to beat cancer. He wasn't fighting for any other reason but yeah. to restore our relationship wow. and to have this beautiful time together um, of healing. Wow. And to this day, I mean, I miss my dad so much. I love him so much. The scar's so gone, much. isn't it? The scar's yeah. completely yeah. gone. I mean, <laughs> I don't view my dad with any kind of anger, bitterness, nothing at all. He was just the greatest man alive. <laughs> and for God to take my 16-year-old heart saying, I hate you, I never want to see you again, I don't want you involved in my life, to now looking back on my relationship with my dad was just respect, admiration, and true like love. Um, it's just amazing. Thanks for sharing that, Rose. Absolutely. That is so incredibly powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And I do hope that it brings hope for other people it will. because I used to think my dad was beyond the reach of God, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and so often we can fall into that trap thinking, well, this person did this and so God can't touch their life, mm -hmm. but uh, it's exactly, exactly the opposite, you know? Yeah. So. Shush how powerful hope is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that your father saw something in you that, so, that, that touch of God in your life that mm -hmm. so transformed his heart. Yeah. And just, you see that transformation from being just those walls in his heart to just opening up completely just by the fact that you were able to live out that love mm -hmm. that God has for you. Awesome. But you know, you, you, you do have the situation that sometimes there isn't a reconciliation and yet scripture tells us to honor our father and our mother. How, how do you honor when their behavior towards you is dishonorable like that? I mean, let's say that he didn't get saved at 18 and fight for you for, wow, that's amazing. But how, how, do we, how do we walk through that? How do we honor when it, their behavior towards us hasn't been very honorable? Absolutely. I think, I think we should talk about that because you've got a lot of people out there that are in situations like that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a similar situation. Um, actually, Rose's story does give me such hope for my father because he's still with us and is in his own ways, really trying to be a better father and mm -hmm. grandfather to our children. And um, about a decade ago, when I rededicated my life to God and shortly after that married an incredible man and started having children of my own and, and seeing just God's true intention for fatherhood, yeah. I was able to put to rest a lot and really all of what I thought was my offenses with my father. Mm -hmm only to realize just a couple months ago after the holidays, I was struggling with, with Christmas and my dad's visit and it had just all felt disappointing, yeah. I think would be the, the best way to put it. And God showed me like, you're still, you're still carrying these offenses, they just look different. Mm -hmm. And I'm the type of person who I, I want to check that box. I wanna be over the offenses I had with my dad, I don't want, the father issues to follow me around or label me. And mm. then it's just so like God to be like, no, like I, I still have something for you in this area. And, and just to paint such a different picture than I can even imagine it. Mm. And working through the layers, because mm. father wounds are so unique because yeah. they are, um, they directly affect our relationship with God. Yeah. And he, his heart is to change that. Mm -hmm. His heart is to show us a true picture of who he is. And um, so I'm still can say I haven't arrived. I'm sure there's still layers to come. And ultimately my hope is to see. Yeah. <coughs> my dad just really um, accept the forgiveness that I've offered. Yeah, I love that you said that because, you know, Julie, I can look at my dad and I think my dad didn't feel like he was worthy of relationship. Mm -hmm. Like because he had failed so much yeah. that he had lost too much ground yeah. and that he did not feel like he was worthy of family. And I, I yeah. remember my aunt saying that to me afterwards, like it wasn't your dad didn't love you. He didn't think he deserved you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and I would be like, well, that's just ridiculous. But I understand that the same kind of things that shame people, you know, of those kind of years, you know, they just feel like that failure is going to keep coming. And I love that God is painting a new picture of hope for you yeah, that he's saying, you know, and, and, and even the tears that you would do right now, mm -hmm. I just feel like that's watering all those prayers yeah, and great. that seeded mm -hmm. that hope that's already in you. And I mean, um, we love you and, and we, yeah. we just, we know that you're just so surrounded, but you don't want to see your dad miss out on that. Yeah. 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 And that, that's the thing. I wanted my dad to enjoy my children. Yeah. I wanted them to, 
I wanted him to feel like he could engage the way yeah. John engaged or like I see how Addison engages. And so I believe that that's a hope set before you. I really do. Uh, I thank you for sharing your story because it really reminds me of my own relationship yeah. with my own father, you know, and, and I grew up in a, in a household where, you know, my parents were immigrants from Korea. So we didn't really communicate as well, you know, and I hardly ever heard my parents ever say they love me. I don't think I've ever heard my dad say he's proud of me. And so that, that kind of really affects you as a child growing up and, and thinking about your worth. And I really was sort of shaped my identity and my value around trying to earn grace and earn love and trying to accomplish more so that, you know, maybe one day my dad and my mom will notice me for, for what I've accomplished. And it really, I didn't notice until later on, but I had grown a lot of offense towards my parents. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, I, you know, to this day, I, I believe that it's not all their fault. They've grown up in that same environment themselves. But it was only one day when I, um, I was in my bedroom, one night when I was visiting home from, for the holidays from college, and I just felt the Holy Spirit put it on my heart that I need to get up and go downstairs and talk to my parents. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, that, that walk from my bedroom mm -hmm. down to the living room was the longest walk. <laughs> and I, there are so many times when I just wanted to turn around and go back to my room. But I felt every single step, I felt the Spirit of God just encouraging me to keep going one after the next. Mm -hmm. And I sat myself down next to my parents, and I told them to turn off the TV. And I just said, Dad, I, I've, I, I want to forgive you. And uh, I, I know that I also could have been a better son, and I want to ask for your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it, what, what happened was my dad was just, he didn't, didn't know how to react. He was just stone cold. But in that moment, I just started bawling. I went to my room and I cried for 30 minutes straight, and I felt that there was something that was lifting from my heart. It was a 20 pound weight, and I felt this wall in my heart just being broken down. And I knew that in that moment, God was doing something in my heart. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that it was just a freedom that came. And I, I, I just see how, looking back over those next five years, God has changed my life. He's changed my character. He's changed who I was, my, my destiny. And it really was that first act that set the motion for me to walk into who I'm called to be as a man of God that ultimately allowed me to go into full-time ministry and be here today working in this ministry. So I really thank God for for that breakthrough, for this message that you so so well stewarded. Yeah. Well, so and you just you. modeled what needs to happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you just modeled that. You know, um, something that God said to me, I remember after my dad was already gone, but you know, I knew he had made that connection with God. And I remember one day I was praying and I felt the spirit of God like talking behind me and he said, I loved your dad mm -hmm. before he was your yeah. dad. He said, I loved your dad before he was an alcoholic. And he said, my, my grandparents were also immigrants from Sicily. And he said, I loved him when he was the frightened 10 year old boy when his dad died. And, you know, like, and I was just like, we don't understand what they went through. Mm -hmm. We don't understand that they're like, they shut down on some stuff yeah. that maybe we've been open with. And for you to be open probably was the most courageous act. Your dad probably wishes he could do that. And so when we begin to, to model vulnerability to people who have not ever been able to be vulnerable, everything just changes. So, you know, that's how it begins. You know, we honor because we're honorable, not because other people have earned the right to be honored. We are honorable people, so we honor. We honor because God you know, honors, honors. So we do that. If, if you look at David, David was crying out for Saul to affirm him as son. He kept saying, my father, my father, even after being in the wilderness for years, yeah. please be a dad to me. Yeah. And if you look at a father's affirmation, it's so important. And I, I hope there's some fathers that are watching this or potential fathers that you'll remember this. But if you look at Jesus, he, even he needed to be affirmed. At, when he was baptized, God said, this is my beloved son and I'm pleased yeah. with him. So Edward, I want to say now as a, as a church father, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. I am. Well done. And um, I want you to notice what happened when the church city fathers didn't recognize Jesus because just a short time later, he went to Nazareth mm -hmm. and they said, what? Who is he reading this scripture to us? What does he mean this day this scripture's fulfilled? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's the carpenter. He's the kid to build my furniture. Mm -hmm. They didn't affirm him. Yeah. And the Bible says that even Jesus Christ, yeah. the Son of God manifested in the flesh, could not do any mighty works. He was restrained wow. because of a lack of affirmation from, yeah. his father, from, from the fathers of his city. Yeah. So here's the enemy, if you're the Son of God, trying to take away the affirmation of the Father at that baptism. Mm -hmm. 
And it's just so important that we remember as fathers that we tell our, our children, mm-hmm. we love you, yeah. Julie, I love you. Mm-hmm. I'm your father-in-law and I am so proud of you. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget when I was in Australia on that golf course. I, I'm not smart enough to have this response, but I, I'll never forget my response because I know it was God speaking through me to you. And you called me and said, I'm pregnant. Remember? I'm on a golf course in Australia. I said, and, and Julie's and, 19. And the first, it was a surprise. And you're the first. It's teen pregnancy. Yeah. She's married. She's married to my son. <laughs> first words out of my mouth. Do you remember them? I said, Julie, do you remember? I wish I did. I, said, I remember. You're going to be an amazing mother. I said, Julie, you're going to be an amazing mother. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And I, I meant it. But I knew it was God speaking through me to say, I'm proud of you. You're, even before you, your baby's out, I know you're going to be an amazing mom. And you are an amazing mother. I mean, I watch you with your children, and I'm just so in awe. So, you know, um, yes, fathers have to be turned to the children, but the ch- children have to be turned back to the father. So what you've done, what you've done, what you've done. What I did with my dad, which none of you know about, but my wife, um, we have to do that. Our hearts have to be turned back and, and, and forgive any areas of disappointments. Rose, I'm so proud of you for, for, the, so for the way you allowed God to heal your heart. And uh, somebody else could have just said, you know, yeah. I don't care what he does. He, he treated me like a jerk for 16 years, and those were the most 16 years of important years of my life. He didn't raise me right, but you chose to turn your heart back to your father. Yeah. So I'm, I just commend you all sitting around here. And it's a very important, very important lesson. It's, it's actually this and the Joseph one are my two favorites because it really gets down to where we all live. Yeah. So thank you all for being so vulnerable so honest and your tears are so beautiful in God's eyes. I I know that. So thank you.